Hello. Hello. Kamar Joba. I'm Nikki. I'm Nico. And welcome to our channel. So, we are pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> True story. I'm working out at the gym and I start breaking out on my forehead right here. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I don't get bumps on my face. What's going on? I bet you I'm pregnant. So I took a pregnancy test and it was positive. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of scared to tell him because he had COVID. So I didn't want it to be a bittersweet moment. I wanted it to be a sweet moment. And it was kind of overshadowed by our COVID thing, stuff. Oh my God, you guys, I just took a pregnancy test and it's positive. I'm not sure how I want to tell Nico. Yeah, it was crazy because on the same day I heard that she's pregnant and Literally one hour before that, doctor told me that I have COVID, I was positive. I was like, should I be right now happy or should I be nervous? I was like, what if she has COVID too? So for me, it was very hard to be happy and not to show my uh, nervousness. Hey little baby, unknown baby. Look, we can't wait to see you. We are so excited. I'm so excited. A couple days ago, I just found out that I'm having a baby, we are having a baby, but Nico is at his house because he's got COVID. He has a positive COVID test and I have to be isolated in a hotel down the street from the house. We are in Tbilisi, Georgia, outside of the US, so we are in a completely different country. I'm really nervous because I never thought that I wanted to have kids, but I have the best partner in the world, I have the best husband in the world, and I'm actually really happy. I'm happy and nervous, and I never thought I'd feel this way, but I don't know, it's just amazing. So I found out that I had COVID, I think a few days after you. Mm -hmm. I think it was three days after he got COVID, I got COVID. And, but we had been isolated for the last few days. I was in a hotel and he was still at, he was still at home. I'm in the hotel room doing TikTok videos, like everything is good. Yes, I'm pregnant, but everything is good. And found out I had COVID. I think we all got stressed out. His mom, his family got stressed out. We all got stressed out. And I didn't, I actually didn't want to tell anybody that I was pregnant at the time because I wanted to wait until 12 weeks, of course, to make sure that everything was good before telling even my family that we were expecting a child. And we kind of had to tell them right away because it was... Yeah, it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. So when I found out that I had COVID, I had to leave the hotel because in Georgia, you can't just stay in a hotel. You can't, unless it's a... COVID hotel. I got on a bus, <laughs> they picked me up from that hotel and they took me to an official COVID hotel, which I was still isolated from Nico. So I was, re I was really afraid because obviously I didn't know the language and I was carrying a baby. So I didn't sleep all night. I've been crying all night because I feel like I'm by myself. I am by myself. I don't know if this baby's gonna survive. I don't wanna go home. It was really difficult because I was the only one who could translate, and then if I wasn't there, like it was for me, it was difficult to uh, manage all of it at the same time while I'm sick as well. I think it was because of all the stress. I was really stressing out. Nico actually went to the hospital mm. because. He, he was having lung problems. Yeah, my pneumonia started, so I was on the oxygen for, for a week or so, and um, it was helping to recover my lungs. Also, my uh, liver got inflamed because of so many injections and medicine in my uh, veins, so it was really difficult. It was a lot of stuff, and during that time, it's like I was going through what I thought was a miscarriage, and he couldn't be near me. He actually called his cousin to pick me up and take me to the emergency room. So he was just picking me up, taking me to the emergency room, didn't know exactly what it was for. And she told me that 
I have a high risk of miscarriage. So they gave me progesterone to stop the bleeding. It was just all the stress, it was all of that. And then Nico started hyperven hyperventilating because he couldn't get to me. A couple days later, I actually ended up going to the hospital to be with him and we stayed together until we got well. My symptoms weren't that bad, but just the fact that I was pregnant with COVID in a foreign country, I really needed to be next to him. Basically, I was looking after her or she was looking after me. We were eating together, <laughs> watching cartoons. Oh my God, don't even get me started on the cartoon. So the only thing that was in English in the hospital was SpongeBob. SpongeBob, like yeah, Nickelodeon. SpongeBob. What SpongeBob's getting on my nerves. It's the only thing here in English. And I'm tired of hearing him cry. First day <laughs> when she arrived to the hospital, at night suddenly she said, I am leaving to walk outside. I said, there is no chance that they will let you to go outside. And she's like, no, I'm going. So she decided to go out. <laughs> and, and I'm basically, I looked at my watch and I'm counting seconds in how many seconds they will bring her back to the room. So she walked outside and in five seconds, 10 doctors showed up in masks, in whole <laughs> costumes. And so they brought her in back to the room. I was like, Yes, yeah, so, I mean, okay. I, I was I was trying to escape the hospital. I wanted to go home. I do not like hospitals. I never liked hospitals. There was basically like 10 nurses that just brought me back in the room and they said, you can't leave. <laughs> you can't leave until this is over, until a doctor releases you. So now to this day, I will not, every time SpongeBob comes on the TV or I hear just, ah, you know, <laughs> the sounds of SpongeBob, I just cringe because that was just such, Mm. a crazy time that I just don't want to remember. His grandmother was also rushed to the hospital with COVID and we were dealing with all of that, her being sick while we were in the hospital as well. Yeah, it was crazy. And my whole family, my mom, my dad, my brother, everybody got COVID. So yeah. at the same time for me, it was like, I didn't know who should, should I worry about in that moment, about myself, about my wife, my future, baby, my grandma, my family, it was like too much at the same time. So then I decided not to worry at all, just to keep going and later it got better. I'm really grateful for the nurses and doctors in Georgia. They were really nice. And you know, sometimes just, and I'm just being honest, being a person of color, in hospitals and doctor's offices in America, sometimes it's kind of hit or miss, depending on the doctor, we've got really good ones and then we've got some that just really don't care. And I found that the doctors and the nurses in Georgia, they were really nice. Mm -hmm. They loved me, I loved them. So thank you, <laughs> Madlova, to all of the hospital people that took care of us in Georgia. Really excited about this baby. And obviously this is why we waited so long to tell people because we wanted to make sure that everything was okay because we went through such a traumatic time. And at the same time, as we were getting well, um, his grandmother, Babushka, she, she didn't make it. So she passed away and it was really tough because his grandmother is like his favorite person in the whole world. And I loved her, she loved me. We are convinced that this baby is the gift that she left us with. And we heard the heartbeat of the baby two days after my grandma's heart stopped. Yeah. So for me, it was a sign from God that basically this baby is the future of uh, my grandma's legacy. And uh, I can't wait to see my baby and to see the baby's eyes. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Babushka. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> so, your dad cut up the strawberries for me, washed my apple, and now he is at his little brother's birthday party. See, your, your dad is so sweet, baby. I'm doing a little bit better, still not 100, but I'm just hoping to get my energy back so that I can at least move around and, and, and move my body like I'm used to. So I feel really weak, 
but I'm happy to be alive. If you have any name suggestions, we would really appreciate it. And the theme is warrior. So a warrior princess or warrior prince, a lion, a lioness, because this baby really fought, fought to be here. And mm -hmm. we want the name of the baby to really mean something significant. Anyway, subscribe to our channel. I know it's brand new, it's just growing. Nakwamdis. 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 That means bye in Georgian. We're kind of rock stars. We're little rock stars. Jeez. <laughs> I'm a rock star. <laughs> and I'm going to be a rock star mom soon. So. Yes. Yeah.